that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a spiritual strategy that was designed to be an extension of the body extension of Christ and to be the conduit that reveals Jesus hallelujah and we also did establish that um, the three major errors that we identified in the body of Christ universal the body of Christ Africa and the body of Christ in Nigeria and then of course across every region number one is the error of apostasy a deviation from God's original patterns which is either because the individuals were not of God or their doctrines are not of God an individual can be of the devil completely or an individual can genuinely be of God but your doctrine may not be of God apostasy the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons the second error that we identified in the body of Christ is the error of indifference individualism provided it has not affected me is none of my business it doesn't matter which man of God is dying it doesn't matter what is wrong with the body of Christ once I am fine let everything go this is that was the mistake of Esther on hearing that her man was plotting the annihilation of the Jews she thought she was safe because she was in the palace and Mordecai warned her said don't you think that if you are silent and you do not use your privileged position to advocate Christ when they are done with us they will discover you are a Jew and they will also kill you then the third error we identified is the error of imbalance in fact it's not just imbalance but imbalance and then exaggerated confrontation of problems problems can be confronted from the standpoint of a genuine desire to solve them or the joy to expose them you can solve a problem for instance if you see someone who is sick you can talk about that sickness from a passion to see that person healed or you can talk about the sickness from a passion to rub it off and create a basis for contrast so it's not enough to just try to address I think one of the mistakes again that is already developing into another error is the mistake of everybody trying to correct everybody in the body of Christ it looks like it's accurate almost every pulpit now is full of someone observing somebody's mistake so we feel that correcting the body of Christ is proof that you might be fine yourself let him that stand takes heed the person who has fallen has fallen already it is the one who is standing that should be afraid are we together so we have all kinds of things young people standing on stage and busting fathers everybody correcting everybody everybody pointing hands everybody you know those kinds of things let me tell you this the apex of transformation is not knowledge the apex of transformation is love you know that your level of transformation has gotten to its zenith not by the accumulation of knowledge but that the higher you rise in the spirit the more you see the mercy and the grace of God and then it cultures an attitude of genuine love first towards God and towards his body I know you are enlightened to the degree to which I find the love factor in you genuinely genuinely hallelujah so we identified this and then I did say something yesterday I want to repeat that these three errors are children 
that came from the same womb are we together the error of apostasy the error of individualism and self the error of imbalance that comes from wrong motives that all of them are triplets that came from the same womb and the name of that womb is inaccurate discipleship through the communication of doctrine that is the mother that produces trouble inaccurate discipleship discipleship is a spiritual system by which believers are mentored into stature and maturity is God's predefined program for the growth of the believer are we together I know that the name has been abused every time we hear discipleship for many of us it may just be going through the rudiment of a denomination's curriculum it may not be bad provided what is being taught is true but largely like we identified yesterday most of what is taught in what we know to be our discipleship platforms are largely opinions that are products of personalized dealings rather than doctrines that it is dangerous and risky for the template of your mentorship should just be personal experiences personal experiences are very subjective they depend on your personality they depend on your level of yieldedness your level of understanding they depend on your mantle and the assignment a portion it is dangerous to create doctrines out of personalized dealings because someone who is not called along your path will find problem obeying that doctrine this is just a recap of yesterday are we together yes and like our father was sharing when he was up here i did observe yesterday that just because you are holding truth does not mean it will bless you and it does not mean it will bless people truth is like a knife it depends on how you hold it women will tell you there are many times you can use your own knife to cut yourself there is a skill the bible says rightfully dividing you can divide in error you can divide from a preconceived bias so he says let god be true and let every man be a liar are we blessed then we now began to talk about Matthew 16 Jesus was speaking and he said who do men say that I the son of man am and some said you are Elias you are one of these prophets etc and then he said okay now what do you say that I am and Peter was speaking by the spirit he says I know who thou art thou art Christ the son of the living God and he said Simon Barjona flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but the spirit of my father and this I say to you, you are Peter and on this rock. What is the rock? The rock is not Peter. The rock is on this revelation. I will build my church. And if I'm allowed to build my church, it will be so formidable that the gates of hell will not be able to prevail. Are we still together? And so we said that the fact that the gates of hell seem to prevail over our current context of what we call the church territorially regionally nationally continentally and globally that shows that there is a defect in our architecture and so this conference seeks among other things to bring us back to the drawing board so that by the lens of the spirit we are able to look at the areas of defect and then correct them the beautiful thing about a building is that a building can be renovated a building can be remodeled is that true he that bears fruit John 15 says my father will prune pruning is an act of cutting away not the whole tree but you create more space for higher levels of productivity and let me say something that I said yesterday I know that there's been all kinds of abuses in the body of Christ especially for we who God has trusted with some level of grace so let me say it up front that every time God grants an opportunity this is a philosophy and a revelation I've held for many years and 
when God grants me the privilege to come into a city and to teach, mentor, and build believers, I do not come as one who is better in any way or greater. It is simply the privilege of an election of grace. Number two, I do not come to demean or downplay what God is already doing. There are always witnesses and vessels in every territory. Just because you are not aware does not mean they are not there. Let's learn so that we do not make the mistake of Elijah. Elijah said, I am the only one. And God said, you are joking. There are 7,000 others who have not bowed down. Chances are that sometimes knowledge can puff up and it can bring a lot of pride. So when we come into cities like this, in an attempt to communicate truth, we can fall into the error of abusing and demeaning the men and the women of God, making it look as though they are not serious people, they don't have sufficient light. The danger is that after such meetings, the members no longer have regard for their leaders. In an attempt to communicate truth, it's like busting a pipe and using the water to quench fire. When the fire is quenched, you have created another trouble. Are we together? There is, there is the honor of priesthood that must be preserved even while addressing issues of concern. Many years ago, I was in Yola for a conference. Very great conference. And when I got there, there were some, I think it was press people or, you know, just um, a television station or so and all of them had been people who had been who had benefited from my life and the ministry they were so excited to talk to me and they made a statement one of them was so excited and the statement was an attempt to be sarcastic over the pastors and the leaders in the region as an attempt to show that I am a superior man of God. So he made a statement, paraphrasing. Maybe something like, thank you for coming to give us light. All this rubbish we have been receiving now, thank you for coming. And immediately I rebuked him. Listen, men of God, we must be matured enough to preserve the sanctity and the honor of priesthood. Even if it means losing our own sense of regard to preserve the body. I would have been happy like many of us will be and say wow so you are aware that i'm here no thy kingdom come must be greater than your personal agenda and i rebuked those gentlemen i said never carry that ideology again if the whole world is like joshua selman the world will be a dangerous place it will be full of imbalance are we together because we see in part and we prophesy in part and we must be honest enough to admit that it is the corporate body that will be able to reveal Christ when Jesus held the bread which he called himself he broke it into different dimensions no one person had the whole bread everybody had a part for you to see that bread everybody who is a holder of it must come together then you see the complete bread having your own portion and teaching your own portion as all the bread is error the fact that you believe what you are holding is all of it is a sign that you are under an attack. This is just summary. We are, we are summarizing yesterday's teaching. Spiritual maturity is not just by your longevity in the faith. Mm -mm. It's not just by the names and the titles and the mundane accolades of men. It's a testament of your growth through an encounter with the spirit an encounter with the word i've done a teaching on that four major encounters that every believer must have to sustain stature in the spirit one is an encounter with the son of god the second is an encounter with the spirit of grace the spirit of truth the third is an encounter with the word of god and then the fourth is an encounter with the body of christ you can encounter God. You can encounter the Holy Spirit. You can be born again. You can know scriptures. But if you have not encountered this mystery entity called the body of Christ, you will never come into balance. Are we blessed? Are you seeing that this, this, 
this introduction alone calls for sitting down quietly we need to lay our golden crowns and say look i've done well i have prophesied i have prayed for the sick but it's time to sit down swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there then your day will dawn his at work in you changing everything in obedience to Christ. there should be no embarrassment when it has to do with growth no it's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday that at the end of this conference you become better equipped to be a witness and ambassador for the kingdom you can go back on sunday and you are happy even for your members why because you know that you have come with a greater level of accuracy you can see the areas of error and imbalance three months in this newer version of you and you will see that you are doing much for the kingdom are we together are we ready for this morning whilst you are seated pray from the depth of your heart my heart is open oh god my heart is open i trust your wisdom my heart is open teach me your ways those outside are you praying you may be outside but make sure the lord is hearing you there is still destiny calling for you even you you are outside following online make sure you are praying You want everything to come into divine order. You want to walk more accurately in signs and wonders. You want to dispense the truth of God's word with a greater sense of accuracy. Oh Lord, keep praying. Will you set my heart on fire for you? For you. Oh Lord, put my life in order for you. I wanna burn for you. Oh Lord. Set my heart on fire for you. For you. Aladaka tabrande gete barato sali. Sika barato shale brande gete barato skata brande gete balada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Ephesians chapter 4 we have a brief session this morning I will build my church part 2 this also doubles as a minister's conference if you want to call it because this is the part that has to do we we'll read it's a long reading we're going to read the first 16 verses from verse 1 Ephesians 4 verse 1 media let's go to verse 1 let me just use my Bible so that okay verse 1 we're reading down to verse 16 please follow carefully now I therefore the prisoner of the Lord Paul is speaking mentoring the church in Ephesus now let me say a few things calling it is your responsibility to stop men from doubting if you were really called so you do that by giving diligence otherwise they have a right to question whether god really called you or not that you give diligence to make your calling and your election sure verse 2 now it says with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love you see that the bible says to forbear one another there's no time let me tell you what forbearance is forbearance is not forgiveness 
forbearance is to create accommodation for the limitation and the weakness of another because it will happen again and again and again and again are we together so if i'm a noisy person you don't forgive me you forbear because that noise will happen again that's what it means to forbear to forbear means create space for the limitations of men back to the scripture number three endeavoring to keep the unity of spirit in the bond of peace uh-huh there is one body hallelujah no matter how the body fights there are times where some viruses and some germs get into the body and we say the body begins to fight itself is that true doctors will tell us your body is fighting yourself and one of the ways that they help the body to come back to order is by sedating the entire body so that the person is at the point of rest then they can now diagnose what is really wrong and you will find out that it was a product of something wrong that was introduced into the body or so that now began to cause all those reactions the bible says there is one body there is one spirit that means we need to examine the various things we are hearing that we credit to the holy ghost because the bible says there is one spirit and yet the confusion that comes from our hearing his voice is very very many that means the problem is not the spirit the problem is our faculty of perception hallelujah the bible says even as ye are called in one hope of your calling verse 5 one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all speaking to believers seven now here is where our discussion starts haven't given us that preamble paul is about to teach now about the system of administering the gift and the grace of god to the end that believers become efficient and become matured are we still together he says but to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of christ to how many everyone to everyone that means there is nobody nobody who is born again who is useless as far as providing aid for the maturity of the saints is concerned to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of christ verse 8 wherefore this is the basis now when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and then he gave gifts unto men keep that scripture there he gave gifts unto men the gifts he gave were not talents the gifts he gave were men he gave men unto men are we together now the name of those men are gifts among the many brethren who he has given the grace of god there were people selected from among them called gifts so there are people who have gifts there are people who are gifts are we together verse 9 now he that ascended was it is but he that descended first into the lower parts of the earth and then verse 10 he that descended is the same that also ascended far above all heavens that he might feel all things uh-huh now he gave some do you read in this scripture that there were things he gave all but there were now things he gave when it has to do with the measure of grace he gave all but now to be able to produce these gifts he gave some apostles he gave some prophets he gave some evangelists he gave some pastors teachers 
some theologians will say teaching priests that's where the idea of fourfold will come from regardless how you see it that's not what we're about today but that the reason why he gave this is number one for the perfecting the word perfecting means the maturing equipping the saints until they rise to maturity are we together now that these gifts were mandated by god sent to his body with a mandate to mature the saints so that the saints now being matured will use the grace given to them to do the work of the ministry so in reality the ministers are not the ones we call ministers the ministers are the gifts that prepare the saints transform the saints from members to ministers are you getting what i'm teaching now i know we call men of god ministers but doctrinally speaking the ministers are not just those who preach and teach and prophesy and provide spiritual guidance the ministers are the ones who have been equipped by the gifts and they now go about doing the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry revealing christ glorifying him and advancing the frontiers of the kingdom that is ministry to the end verse 13 to the end that we come into what the bible calls the unity of the faith there is such a reality in the spirit called the unity of the faith the unity of the faith does not mean preaching the same thing the unity of the faith is a point in the spirit where the least of us the least of us has risen beyond the threshold level as far as the matters of the kingdom are concerned and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that becomes the antidote the next verse tells us not being that we henceforth be no more children are you seeing the assignment of the gift is to translate people from being children and the bible tells us the biblical proof that a man is a child don't turn there first corinthians 13 when i was a child three things one i thought like a child i understood like a child i acted like a child that means the fivefold ministry attacks three areas of your life one your thinking two your behavior three your speaking these are the elements that make you mature so if in my teaching there is no provision for your mind to be transformed if in my teaching there is no provision for your work to be more accurate if you are not cultured to speak well and you know speaking is not attacking your mouth is attacking your heart because it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks this is like an anatomy into spiritual transformation this is how we are changed so as a man of god you are not just standing to speak blindly there are three things that you seek to have influence over in the life of people number one is their understanding the word of god must gain ascendance into the thinking and the understanding of people number two is their heart that will eventually translate to their speaking and then number three their walk the way they act their behavior but that's not where i'm going to but are we clear on that this is a minister's conference that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine every wind of doctrine that means god's accurate doctrine is not the only doctrine available there are many others there are doctrines called the doctrines of demons there are the doctrines of men fabrications of men's ideas and by the slight of men and cunning craftiness wherein they lie in wait to deceive verse 15 but speaking the truth how up please this is already a warning let's read together but speaking the truth in what gives credence to the truth you are speaking is the love component not the quality and the truthfulness of the information if the truth is not communicated in love it is truth but it will not profit i'm just proving to you what i said yesterday that just because you have truth 
does not mean it will bless people must discern the love component first before your truth becomes a blessing speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even christ the last verse from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part that he make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself again in love what does this mean that the fivefold was given as a gift listen carefully so jesus we are reconciling a few things now jesus spoke in matthew 16 i will build my church are we together now we are breaking it down now to say when god says i will build my church he meant that there is a system i will create i am the one walking through those people but he will always use men to build men although he's the one building it it's a mystery every house is built by some man how be it god is the builder that means if you downplay men and you trivialize men the purposes of god will suffer as far as the maturity of the saints are concerned men are god's instruments men are god's tools men are the gifts that were given to men so when we say a man is a man of god it doesn't mean every other person is not a, a man of or a woman of god we mean that this is a man that has been called and consecrated and selected by god to become a gift are we together now that contributes in the maturity of the saints the proof that you are a man of God is not because an ordination service happened to you. The proof that you are a man of God is not because you have listening, people listening to you. The proof that you are a man of God is number one, you must know the God that sent you. And number two, you must be about his business. If your life is not contributing to the maturity, the growth of believers, you are not a man of God. You don't have to be fake. Are we together? So Ephesians 4 tells us then that the maturity of the body does not depend on God alone but it depends on the saints the men of God, the gifts so if there is a problem with the spiritual growth in a point state or in the east or in nigeria or in africa or globally we know for sure that the problem is not god because god is ever committed as the builder of his church the next point of diagnosis therefore becomes the men because the doctrines are communicated by the men is that true the error is communicated by the men whether it happens good or bad to the body it comes from the men what then is the key to being efficient as far as being a worthy vessel is concerned the bible says it this way nevertheless the foundation of the lord standard sure having this seal that the lord knoweth them that are his men may not know but the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity are we together then the bible now creates a very interesting scenario it says but in a great house wow in a great house the house is not great because of the vessels the house is great because of the owner and the builder but in a great house although the house is called great there is still trouble within the house so we're about to identify the trouble now so while you are criticizing the body and while we are still managing all our issues the house is still a great house everybody say the body of christ is still a great house one more time the body of christ is still a great house 
yes i know that there are falsehoods i know that there are compromises i know there are all kinds of things however the body is still a great house it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you listen to me the rage of a man you don't keep insulting a man's wife imagine that i'm with reverend dan now and i keep tearing down i spend one hour insulting the wife and i turn to him and say reverend dan you know i love you so much give me um what what mention one nice meal here in a boy oh yeah now these ladies don't embarrass your city oh huh? oh you are not from here it doesn't matter what do you mean is this not the east too tell me something you have ah, i will not continue Opa. oh and sala soup okay so the woman of god has won now watch this imagine that i demand from him to give me money to buy that whereas as as he's giving me the money i turn to his wife and i say in fact as i was saying you know the last time and then i keep turning to him and then the man will have to tap me and say mr man i know that my wife has cancer or fibroid or whatever but she's still my wife every time verify that ring on her hand no matter how sick she is she is still my wife i'm saying this because sometimes we speak about the body of christ as if we are not part of it as though we have created and no 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 we are part of it we don't have any other place to go the body of christ is an extension of christ himself so in a bit to identify and diagnose issues we must know that we are also contributors to those issues listen now you never hear me talk about the body of christ and say them no it is we it is the hand that stole the meat but why did the leg take the hand there why did the eye support seeing the meat why did the brain think well while the hand was carrying it hold on the hand is the one you caught but the hand is not the only one who participated in that stealing why did the salivary gland and the everything cooperated when they threw the meat why did the mouth spit it out there are many factors you see you just see the hand that stole could it be that a man of god ran into trouble because the holy ghost saw that he was going to get into trouble and communicated that grace to you you had the dream one year but you did not pray when it happened you said i saw it shame on you for seeing it for one year and yet it still happened sit down please sit down i think we should pray in the spirit for one minute Shalada bakata prande gede balakotusia. Shane salande pratos kale bradi kide. Shele paruta sede balatus. Lord, you are helping us. Outside, make sure you participate. You are not having the best of conditions, but please pray. The Lord is with you there. hallelujah now listen listen this is for everybody but this is particularly for those that we call now in ministry please listen the spiritual climate of every territory is a reflection of the quality of growth and enlightenment of the spiritual leaders within that territory according to god's design 
no territory should lack apostolic and prophetic voices no it does not mean being called apostle you understand what i mean it doesn't mean apostle and prophet no not at all but that in every territory there must be men and women who help to promote the cause of maturity and the cause of growth within that territory a true apostolic ministry is territorial you are not just giving in fact let me tell you this a true apostolic ministry is not about teaching it's a governmental responsibility you have an assignment to coordinate spiritual activities within a dispensation and then across the territory that has been assigned to you to make sure that the program of God prevails there and then to also make sure that the truths that must be given to the people is communicated within the context of balance and that the believers grow this is what Paul would do so Paul would visit cities and check and say no 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 I'm saying that you people do not understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit here it is that need that will become a conference and so for the next three days he's teaching them he came into Corinth and he saw that there was such a move of the Holy Ghost people were falling under the anointing a man can be preaching and a prophet will just stand up and start prophesying and people were getting drunk all kinds of things were happening there and Paul said no no he called for a conference that was what led to chapter 12 chapter 13 14 he said sit down I need to teach you the Holy Ghost is moving but you people don't know the name of what you are doing the name of that thing that happened yesterday is called the word of knowledge the name of this one that happened is called the signing of spirits he gave them allocations and brought order to the end that all things be done decently and in order then when he was done he noticed there were a group of arrogant people within the assembly who were downplaying others and he said listen even though i've taught you on gifts i'm seeing something lacking let me show you a more excellent way verse 13 though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels and i have not love are you seeing the apostolic ministry bringing balance and understanding they were just doing their thing shining emoji everybody was just shining fighting one another and paul said sit down it ought not to be so there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism and so if it is true that he has called us to be apostles indeed it's not by name the ordination should speak based on what the fruits that come out of what you are doing if you come into a city and you don't bring maturity reconciliation strength you should galvanize the men and the women of god to become an unbeatable force that you stand and say in a boy in the east of the niger the church is alive standing strong that at the end of a conference like this men of god can come and embrace themselves and say look I, I don't even know where your church is that the next time a man of god is organizing a crusade another man will sponsor bosses and he does not even know him the moment souls will be won let jesus be glorified regardless our prejudices please sit down Oh 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 Listen Men of God, let me challenge you. Someday if Christ tarries, we are not going to be here. You must love the body of Christ more than your ministry. If you mislead people because of your ego, a day will come when you leave. You will punish your children and your children's children. They will say you are the one who brought division to this land. You are the one who brought deception. Even when you knew the truth, your ego was bigger than the truth. I made up my mind that I will serve my generation if I perish while doing it no problem for me at this point in my life God has helped me to
to live is Christ and if I die is gain in all fairness I have no business looking for an agenda for myself God has shown me mercy listen to me the real proof that you are in ministry is not that you are preaching the real proof that you are in ministry is your passion and your love for Jesus and his program not because you just found out that there is honorarium in ministry there is jeep in ministry there is a five-star hotel and since you applied for a job civil defense you didn't get a job immigration you didn't get a job nmpc you didn't get a job and you say you know what instead of wasting myself let me look for a cheap spiritual route to gain relevance whatever motivates you to get into ministry is what will sustain you while you are there can i tell you this i tell you i stand before the god of heaven the world is listening to this when i got into ministry i didn't know they used to give honorarium i didn't know there was anything called honorarium in fact i didn't even know i was called all i wanted was jesus lord i love you that's all i want my hunger and my passion for you not fame not money not a name apostle nonsense it is jesus ever and jesus only the desire was not miracles the desire was not prophecy the desire was not pa when i was coming you people have so honored me in this land right from the hotel and i came and i saw all the protocol running running and following the jeep and i was nodding my head i said i hope a young minister here will not just sit down and that's what drives you into prayer and fasting oh i saw people running with apostle i must go for 100 if it's power let me tell you god is not stupid he must fetch your motive if your motive is not to glorify jesus you can fast for 100 days you will never contact genuine grace please sit down sometimes we teach as if god is a robot who does not have a mind we forgot he's the one that created us prayer and fasting does not automatically bring power you are joking We must be careful how we are raising the young people in our territories and i tell you this i have found out that the reason why many young people do not want to submit to mentorship is not rebellion is because they know the patterns they will come under is dangerous and faulty so their withdrawing is not an act of rebellion we just keep telling them why are you not coming to learn and they are saying learn this I'm seeing the gimmicks you are playing in ministry. You want to bring me into that rubbish again. There is a pure pride that God is raising. Oh, 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 oh,
dream you are showing me the crusades i'm seeing this pattern cannot lead to it Please pay attention. God is doing something in your land. There is a fire of revival that must be ignited in this conference. Men of God, hear me. There is a purification. The bride is being purified. This is what is happening in this conference. Because there is a fire that must fall on Eboi. There is a fire that must fall on the east. But the fire cannot fall until there is a sacrifice on the altar. What is happening now is a cleansing. There is a purifying. So that you will step into genuine ministry with results. Authentic results. Not competition. Oh, the refiner's fire is here. The refiner's fire. The refiner's fire. Pray in one minute. Shanabekate, refining your music ministry, refining your apostolic ministry, refining your prophetic ministry, refining your intercessory ministry. Pray. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. Shalande shalakata brande gelekosa ele shali parusia tabrande geda lasko baich agata baratata. There is fire coming on your destiny. I tell you, it's a refiner's fire. This is not impartation. This is not impartation. It's a refiner's fire. Purifying the pride. Skata bakata barete kete balata. Shana bakata brande gete kotos koto bariata. Bakata bakata kotos kata bade toshikata. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Listen to me. Please listen to me. You can fake power 
you can fake miracles but you cannot fake a testimony of a relationship with God you cannot fake a testimony of authentic presence what God is doing is not just showing that a man is powerful there is something happening to you so that by Sunday every altar in this city fire is burning regardless the name of the church regardless the name of the church the sick cannot come and go back sick the oppressed cannot come and go back oppressed it's not about struggling if it's not there it's not there how could you not have membership with this kind of grace how could you be struggling for growth leave those things is because the major things are not in place we're going to do some prayers this morning but listen to me if God is going to build his church he must find men that love his presence more than the pulpit he must find men that love his presence more than conferences he must find men that love his presence more than sermons if God is going to build his church in a boy hear me man of God I'm not in doubt of your call your call is genuine but we must learn the protocol of the altar that is what gives us power that is what gives us credence when we stand out we must love the body of Christ more than our reputation we must love the corporate body more than our denomination there are three things let me just mention it please sit down there are three major requirements the end time apostolic and prophetic voices that God is raising all across the globe in Africa and even in our dear nation Nigeria and even in these regions there are three requirements that everybody must pass if you truly want to be mighty with God number one is the sacrifice of your life your ambition your desires death is the price for life death is the price for life until you die to yourself die to your ambitions to die does not mean to shield them or to fold them to die means to exalt Christ above them until you love God more than ministry more than preaching more than titles apostle this and that until you love God more than the appearance in public play ah this is the man of God there are many 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 manifestations of false humility in the body of Christ false humility full of pride but just because you bow your head does not mean you are humble humility is in the heart I stand before you I've said it many times this man you see standing before you I was in the wilderness when he found me I have vowed that I will remain there where honor found me is where I will remain where the prophetic found me is where I will remain where influence found me is where I will remain 
if it found me on my knees I will remain if it found me in the place of prayer I will remain there if it found me in the place of fasting I will remain there fame can kill we come from backgrounds and families where we are humans everybody wants to be great you want your family members to say surely there is somebody that God has raised there is nothing wrong with that but you see please listen to me when you get to a point where your obsession to prove a point you people did not believe in me now see what I've become be careful Jesus at the center of it all it's Jesus at the center of it all from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you let me tell you this this man standing before you by the grace of God and, and I hope you don't misunderstand me but listen do you know by the grace of God I have tasted of honor I have stood before kings the things God has done in my life with all humility it will take my contemporaries many lifetimes to taste of the goodness of God and the things he has done the person speaking to you is not an ignorant person I'm not naive no I know what it means to be a celebrity if you want to call it that way I know what it means to be famous I know what it means to be blessed I have said it everywhere I count all that but no. and I really mean it for the excellency of Jesus if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold and I will tell it to my world Jesus is more than gold if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold and I will tell it to my world Jesus is more than gold it's not a song it is true I respond to an average of six to seven hundred text messages every day and over 30 to 40 percent of those text messages are testimonies and showers of praises for what people believe that God is doing in my life across the nations I'm grateful for those things but when I look at them my prayer is first to bless those who were honest enough to send it but the next prayer is for myself let it not be that when you build houses and you have done this you forget that your heart be lifted up but thou shalt remember that means you can forget whether you study your Bible or not there is a revelation you can come and preach whether you pray or fast or not you can come and someone will be shouting under the anointing it's God that knows whether you are serious with him or not listen men of God I want you to get to a point where you can carry your ministry files and keep it before God and say Lord I love you more than this ministry will not become an idol for me it's not to be irresponsible but to get to a point where it is not about conferences conventions billboards posters crowds thank God for these things you want to be used by God to equip and mature the saints you want to be an instrument that will fulfill that I will build my church mandate you must be dead in yourself dead in yourself number two very quickly because of time what is the second requirement 
what kind of vessel is God looking for in this season you must be a vessel that submits yourself to a thorough understanding of scripture a thorough understanding of the ways of God you want to be used by God to bless people you are not going to be anointed by God and you will not be given influence over people to teach them opinions and just teach them one topic after the other you must submit yourself to learning submit yourself to a thorough understanding of the doctrine of the Christian faith what is the Christian faith all about what are the foundational pillars you will be amazed to know how many men of God cannot tell you what are the doctrines the foundational pillars of the Christian faith Paul spoke about a few of them in Ephesians in Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 just a few of them but there are many more let's look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 please help us so that we will pray Hebrews chapter 6 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ he says let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundation so there are foundations foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God verse 2 of the doctrine of baptisms of the laying on of hands the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment please look at me when Jesus was teaching he began to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and here's what he said I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth are we still together and that he will reveal Jesus when Jesus resurrected in Acts chapter 1 the Bible says he called them again for another conference for 40 days and he was teaching them many things we do not teach today that matured the body do you know that there are many members in church who are not born again are you aware of that it's not their fault it's because the man of God never told them that your entry into this kingdom is through Jesus there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved the throne room does not save you heaven does not save you a man of God does not save you salvation is only through faith in the name of Jesus you will be amazed at how many workers in church how many pastors in church they cannot remember submitting to such an experience many people were employed come and walk and so they came as employees with no encounter according to your word according to your promises listen i can stand secure will you carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word oh lord so the average believer does not know how to deal with the flesh now this come again God bless you, eh? I keep using you. Now imagine this guy. He was living a wayward life, scattered life, and suddenly he comes to a crusade that was organized maybe 
in a, this auditorium or somewhere in your stadium in this city and someone says come to Jesus he listens to that message and says ah I see the Holy Ghost is convicting him now he gets born again what next then he's planted in a church the guy is confused don't forget that this guy you know the kind of lifestyle he was living just because he gave his life to Jesus does not mean he has been transformed no it's only his spirit that that thing happened to the mind is still alive the bad friends are still there the lifestyle is still there now he is waiting heaven is waiting at the mercy of a correct shepherd to now begin to help this guy nobody ever tells him of the futility of living in the flesh nobody ever tells him about the excellency of the spirit life nobody ever tells him about the supremacy of the word nobody ever tells him about the need for transformation and enlightenment nobody ever tells him there are demons and real spirits that attempt to war against the purposes of god nobody teaches him the excellency of prayer and the ability of prayer to transform and the ability of prayer as a spiritual system for legislation this guy is not learning anything six months is there nothing is happening to him this guy does not know how to know God he does not know how to study whether he reads his Bible or not no supervisory system whether he prays or not no supervisory system at best they just say, Mr. Man, you have been in this church for a long time. What unit are you? He says, I'm not in any unit. Go and join traffic. You have made matters worse for him because you know traffic, usually they don't attend the service. So that guy is at the gate forever. Now, I'm not saying, please, traffic, my traffic people outside. God bless you. Or he comes into the church. He's not born again, but he's a very good instrumentalist. He can play drums. As soon as choir finishes singing, he will go to the back of the church and they sit down on a stone outside there and they're just talking and laughing while the preacher is sweating and shouting and teaching. You see, when demons and spirits come to that church, they don't attack everybody. They study the spiritual climate. I taught you yesterday. And they look and they see that, ah, this man, lost is still alive in him from head to toe. Are you seeing? It's a drama. Now, there's nothing wrong with the issue. But is there something that has been introduced to his life that will help him destroy that? So you find out that someone comes who has been struggling with stealing. You came out and you gave your life to Jesus Christ in a crusade ground. But the sister, I'm not, this is more than follow up, this is maturity. Then you get to a point where they now assign you treasurer. Treasurer or uh, what do you call them? Those who count money. Church. Yes, financial secretary. You see how people fight for those positions in church? That's a loan. Because that thing is difficult. Counting money is hard. Why should you be so passionate about it? It's already a sign that something, something not correct is going on. Are we together? And people keep stealing. Service after service. And I hope you know stealing church money is dangerous. Because listen, mm -mm, don't you, it's not just dangerous because you think it's evil. Let me give you the revelation. So that if you are doing it, you will stop by revelation. Are we together? The revelation is that you see this money you see is one of the spiritual tools that we use to exchange seasons in the spirit that means that if i am tired of a season in my life i can use the principle of seed and resurrection to kill that season i tie that season with understanding on a seed and as i cast that seed if that seed dies that season must die too now but the problem is that i have transferred my pain i've transferred the yokes on my family on that seed and you as a cashier you didn't allow the seed die you stole it that's what happened to Gehazi. it's in the bible the leprosy because it left Naaman, and did not mean he went away Gehazi thought he was just collecting gifts 
let me tell you why it is not well for many people you are counting the money and you just feel like look I'm hungry and then the devil just gives you a scripture those who serve by the altar should eat from the altar you see you see how the devil deceives people are we together at the end of three years this our man is not growing he's in trouble he's struggling with all kinds of things he needs help but nobody's helping him he's looking at all the ladies in the choir and all kinds of suggestions and he's just fighting using flesh he won't stand too long because real victory through enlightenment and transformation death to the flesh has not happened to him the day he now finds a lady who is also struggling what is struggling that's trouble already are you seeing now and the devil will do it in such a way that the lady will come to him for counseling or he'll become a youth pastor uh-huh so we have I, I hope you understand I'm not being sarcastic the curriculum that builds the saints that's why you see people returning to their vomit with speed because what will what will cut them away they came out of Egypt in one day but it took 40 years for Egypt to come out of them just because you are out of Egypt does not mean you cannot remember what happened some of you were attending bars nightclubs the, the clubs are still around every time you pass it you remember you even know where the other door that if you come late you know how you can follow you are not salvation does not just remove that memory is there you will see your friends who will look at you some of you or some persons were in cult groups now they get born again they meet those people again and they say i you will suffer till you come back This is what is happening in church so we have people for many years there is no constructive growth at best they are just concerned about the administration of ministry at me a conference is happening are the posters ready yes sir the posters are ready choir i hope you have songs which one let me hear and administration is happening and in the midst of it jesus is already out so after 10 years you will see someone who had been maybe a music director or a drama director for 10 years saying this god thing eh i'm tired i'm tired of lying i'm tired of pretending for 10 years are you seeing what is happening all across a man of god who has been ministering for instance respectfully speaking maybe across several nations after 20 25 years of ministry handling different positions who just come out and say nobody should talk to me again i'm not a christian again i'm tired of hypocrisy and lying I wasted 25 years of my life following this supposed God and let me tell you this it will keep happening in multiplied forms because our generation now has options internet is an option the music industry is an option if we do not present Christ in a very balanced and a real form that produces genuine results of transformation we will lose our children all it takes is one generation of neglect and the devil will come back and sweep our generation respectfully speaking this is what is happening in the western world their fathers their mothers serve god acceptably with all their heart but then they ignore the children don't worry they are just children and the devil said you know what this mama will never backslide the way she loves god like this she will fast till she dies let's leave her or let's come to the child let's grow with them those children are the presidents today those children are the governors today are you aware that in the next 10 years the person you are calling a child will have children too a boy instead listen to me god is speaking to you everybody in government today everybody in ministry today every thief every armed robber came from somewhere are we together 
the price genuine price of understanding doctrine listen carefully and communicating the same with accuracy and with power we must return and by the grace of God obtain grace from God to make sure that we teach truth that is balanced let's teach our people on prayer let's teach our people on the value and the power of consecration let's teach them on the supremacy of God's word let's teach them on prosperity don't ignore to teach them on prosperity you will produce a weak people without influence that the devil will usurp authority over let's teach our people of for of, of the value of living a responsible life of dignity by the time someone sits under your mentorship for two years three years you should be able to present that person and say jesus christ look at your bride you have put me like hey guy the keeper of the king's virgins he was given the assignment to prepare the virgins before they present themselves to the king and he did a good job all that you have given me jesus said i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition we must be faithful apostle i have only 10 members it does not matter be faithful apostle i have a crowd of people it does not matter be faithful moreover the bible says it is required in stewards that a man be found very quickly requirement number three and then we pray love and passion for god above every other thing the fortitude to settle down and learn doctrine understand scripture so that we can communicate the same with accuracy intentionally to build people the third assignment the third requirement if you want to be greatly used by god is that you must be prepared to be a model yourself let me tell you how transformation happens transformation happens in a territory when there are sufficient models sufficient references that give the people an idea of what god wants them to become are we together it's difficult to transform a territory when there are no references men and women must through their own personal growth become models enough now i know that many of you are afraid of what i just said because being a model is risky people will probe every aspect of your life and the sad reality is that they will find something missing so we are afraid it does not take perfection to be a model it takes sincerity and a determination to see jesus glorified in your life elijah was a temperous man but he was still a model abraham all of these men when the bible says be perfect it does not mean be blameless otherwise what would jesus come to do on the cross it is that be matured and sincere that people can see that intrinsically there is sincerity in your heart listen to me a boy cannot be transformed until there are sincere models models that define responsibility sociologically speaking models that define hunger and passion for god models that define the excellency of enlightenment through education models that define the sanctity of living models that define all these dimensions look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body i called him understudy him look unto jesus there must be men human references sufficient references in this city so it is now easy to correct it is easy to rebuke it's easy to commend it's easy to admonish because you can do that with respect to references if you say jesus your children cannot see him if you say jesus your members cannot see him they need a manifestation that's why jesus came jesus came as the image of the invisible god he came as the pattern man as a reference 
are we together so you have an exceptional music director that loves Jesus passionately a disciplined young man a visionary young man a godly young man now the Holy Ghost can use him as a reference to how music in the church should be are, are you seeing now and before you know it every other church can learn in five months the error in that area will evaporate because there is one model do you know it's easy for a thing to become a trend once you can find a model when there is one person that preaches right you honor the altar with integrity all of a sudden you find out that those who are given to compromises the holy ghost can use you as a reference to now speak to them to say you can do it right and still excel and the person can go for a three days retreat return back as a man of god into a life of dignity and integrity in ministry the reason why there is hardly transformation is that there are few references are you seeing why jesus called the 12 references that we must be models it is not easy being a model in this generation because you will be the subject of attack you will be the subject of criticism the moment you model christ to a generation the devil will fight you to make sure that whatever it is there is no credence to you but in spite of that remember i will build my church and as you stand for people to look at your life jesus is saying thank you well done good and faithful servant somebody can come with 100 million a bank with 100 million of corrupt money to you as a man of god and you know this money is for the citizens if i collect this money that is the money for somebody's surgery that is the money to heal somebody that is the money for some school they should fix a school that students should go to no i need money but i fear god enough i will not do that now you see respectfully speaking that politician will leave and go back and say wow the next time they tell him all men of god are corrupt you say no 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 i have tasted and i have seen that there are still a few people who will not bow to bear let me tell you this being a model is powerful very powerful if everyone seated here if every man of god if every head of a prayer group every ordained worker everyone makes up his mind that in the name of jesus lord if you are searching for someone to use as a reference let it be me let it be me if you are looking for someone as a model of anointing with balance let it be me if you are looking for someone with a, as a model of prophecy with balance let it be me i remember one time i went somewhere and after ministering a man of god sent me a text requesting to see me and when he met me he said apostle you have changed my life i said glory be to god it's an honor and he said you don't know what i'm saying i came from a background where there was no regard for the word of god the moment you can prophesy you will become a millionaire overnight it does not matter he said there were times that i would just open my bible to preach and say we are wasting time just close that bible and begin to prophesy and people would shout but there is no growth models whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whatever you want to say lord you can do through me wherever you want to go lord you can go through me whoever you want to heal lord you can heal through that's the language and the song of those who want to be models lord you can do it through me if you want to bless people listen 
there are some of you by reason of this conference god will raise you because many people believe that pastors and leaders are just people who collect money from people and never bless society and god can be saying that that vacuum is missing in a boy state how many voices are there who can feed the hungry there is a dimension of god that has not yet been understood that's why they are laughing at him and you sing this song and say lord if i'm the one that you are going to raise to pay the school fees of children and reveal that dimension of jesus i may not be able to prophesy there is no competition give me my own space and i vow that i'll be faithful whoever you want to bless lord you can bless through me whoever you want to change lord you can change through me whatever you want to say lord you can say through me listen we're tired of people saying god said and then it will be that god did not say can you be that one prophet with a difference that i will stay with god and i will grow that if i open my mouth like samuel none of his word the bible says fell to the ground if i say god is lifting people in a point everybody including unbelievers will take you serious because they have discerned that you have done business with god enough to carry an authentic voice you have become god's spokesman through death if you organize a miracle crusade people will not say we're wasting our time don't go there this man they just shout and shout and nobody is healed nobody is delivered we're tired of dragging sick people in and taking them out that you become god's model if they ask and say does jesus christ still heal in a boy even in a beer parlor if they are asking it does jesus christ still heal is those in a beer parlor that will say yes if say and if you doubt it I'll be the one to drag you to that crusade ground because we have seen that there is a man of God upon this earth and in this soil that represents that dimension of God whoever you want to lift Lord you can lead through me whoever you want to change Lord you can change We're going to pray i will build my church the price of being a vessel as you pray i want you to be very sensitive because something will happen to you we are men of god just spare a few minutes will not stay longer than necessary but we have to pray we have to pray three prayer points i'll pray the last one but the first two is for us prayer point number one listen is going to be a prayer of genuine surrender and consecration refine us fire my heart's one desire is to be openly set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be openly set apart for you, my master. I'm ready to do your will. Fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. want to run over. On a long no.
I want to run no. are you ready to pray our prayer will be taken from Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord somebody must die and something must die that somebody is not an enemy somewhere Lord every king I have exalted it took Uzziah dying for Isaiah to see whatever must die in my heart for me to see let it die right now lift your voice and pray kill pride from my life kill lust from my life kill flesh from my life pray don't say I'm a man of God cast your golden crown cry before the God of heaven is missing for some of you is the gifts of the spirit for some of you is character and moral excellence for some of you is finances for some of you is the blessing of influence for some of you is the gift of men i want you to cry before god in the next five minutes father in the name of jesus and in this conference bring these other supplies in the name of jesus so that my calling and my election will be sure so that i will participate in this i will build my kingdom i will build my church project lift your voice and pray Shakata barakatas kada belekatesh, hence ne pusha la brandos kotu barada balada balada ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, please. Please listen. The Holy Ghost just put an additional, an additional prayer point in my heart. Global evangelism and global missions. It should never be that a boy lacks people who will be involved in bringing people from the kingdom of darkness. There must be crusades in this city. Oh. Not crusades to show a man of God is anointed. Global harvest. Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. We stand shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us, you say, Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands we see no light. Listen, listen. If we are not active in soul winning, a day will come all the fathers of faith and a day will come even we ourselves we will transit in glory and there will be no basis for continuity again as you are ordaining other pastors as other people are moving to the mission field there is a vacancy someone must come back and fill that vacuum recycling members just because they have money or political positions is not enough we must go out there listen I don't care how many churches are in this city there are still people who are unreached there must be intention with reaching them for the rest of my life till Jesus comes I will be involved in global missions that everywhere I go among the many things that we trust God to do we must bring people to Jesus 
there used to be an old hymn that we sang in the seminary must i go an empty handed must i meet my savior soul it says not one soul with which to greet him must i empty handed go let me tell you this you are not going to bring pounds and dollars and stand before jesus the gift that you will bring to him is that i spent my life seeing people come to jesus more than prophesying more than working miracles you are about to be anointed but more than that your heart so so we're going to pray that one prayer father the fire for evangelism what came on men like Reinhard Bonke, Billy Graham Peter Youngren father help them please I like just do what don't worry about them go ahead and pray there is a fire that is falling here lift your voice and pray fire for missions let it fall from heaven inside outside please help them just make sure they don't injure themselves fire for global missions fire for genuine souls lord through our hands the lost must be saved must be saved must be saved lord evangelism fire our daddy is here 82 83 many of us were not born i'm sure that our father and our grandfather he saw souls in the days of his youth there is a fire we are losing that must be restored east of the niger do not lose that fire you cannot lose the fire of souls let there be fresh awakenings from your region men and women of fire indeed the stadiums are still waiting for you the sport theaters are still waiting for you the amphitheaters are still waiting for you Who shall I send and who shall go for us this is what I'm hearing the Holy Ghost tell me who shall I send who shall go a hey boy who shall I send who shall I send who shall I send to the stadiums who shall I send to the amphitheaters who shall I send to the schools who shall I send to the markets? Who shall I send to the shrines? Hallelujah. Hear me. When we talk about the global harvest, we are not just speaking to men. We are also speaking to women ladies listen to me you are also part of this divine program we need a resurrection of Catherine Kuhlman's of Ampi McPherson's women of fire and grace once upon a time they were women help them please where are the wailing women the women honor the prophetess women who pray jesus to the earth where are the deborahs where are mary's where are the esters where are the roots
Hallelujah. Now please listen. Please listen. Please listen. There are two prophetic things that are going to happen here. I'm going to lay my hands. Now please listen. In Jesus name. Just listen please. Let's just listen to these instructions. We are wrapping up. I'm going to lay my hands on this oil and speak over it. I hope you know that oil does not anoint. This was designed for cooking. You fry egg, you fry yam with it. This is Goya oil. Oil only becomes a conduit for anointing when an anointed person anoints it. Oil in itself does not have any power. It comes from a tree. But now listen please. I'm going to plead with our father. I believe that there is a reason why God allowed Bishop to be here. There will be a transgenerational transference in this place. Listen. All the servants and Pastor Dan, you help me. And I'm, 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 I'm glad Reverend Vindio Luis here too. The veterans of the gospel. Those who are ministers of the gospel. Maybe senior ministers of people. Those ones is our father, the bishop that is going to anoint you. I'm going to pray on it. Are we together now? And then you just lead a father to them, those people, as he holds that oil. He doesn't have to lay hands on you because of age. You will not weary him. But as you go to him and receive that impact, I'm going to pray on it. When daddy came here, he made a statement. He said, there is a merging of the old and the new. There are mantles in this nation many of us know nothing about. Many of us have not studied the revivals. Even in your city here, there is fire coming on you. Fire. Ah, you will never be the same. It's a burning. You will step into superior dimensions of grace. Please be sensitive. As our father, please those of you who are men of God, senior men of God, would we'll try to coordinate them so we don't just have people come rowdy. As our father, you are touching that oil. Please, I'd like you to know that you will not return the same. Believe me. Accumulation of wisdom, grace, and experience of eight decades plus impartations that have happened wells that have been dug i've had the honor and privilege we'll do the general impartation in the night tonight will be a miracle service and impartation so but my focus now really is on the ministers of the gospel but everybody who is here whether you are in or out the oil will come to you but please listen and i'm doing this number one to bless people help and then number two, so that the younger ministers will learn. You don't just become great for nothing. Uh -uh. There is a protocol. If the realm of the spirit does not recognize you, you'll be doing ministry and wasting your time. And nothing will happen. You will now see the folly and the foolishness of those who insult fathers. There are ancient mantles. Have you studied the history of the church in your region? Do you know the men and women that God lifted in this region? Many young people have not learned. They are just doing ministry blindly. You can't do ministry. You are running a relay. You have to study those who gave you the baton. There are people who have gone to be with the Lord that God raised from your soil. History does not talk about them. But they were fearful men and women. Now there is a generation of men like our father, bishop, men like Uma Upai and the rest. And the truth is, if Christ tarries, in the next few years, the cloud of witnesses will come and pick these men. But young people without a history, they will mess up the future. You must know what was done before you came, so that you do not take away the ancient landmark. It was Dr. David Ugueli who was, who was saying
because many of these young people they are not ready to connect with us. They have not they have not passed the test for transference. Do you know many of the fathers keep bleeding? In as much as they see us jumping around and traveling, they look for these requirements I told you and they don't find it. And many of them are pained right now because I tell you, some of them are already beginning to see the cloud. The cloud is already forming to receive them and they are turning back. Elisha, where are you? Are we going to carry this grace? We stood for years on crusade grounds. Some of you come from the physical bloodlines of these generals, yet you do not carry the grace. Or something is going to happen here now there will be a margin of the old and the new this is a very prophetic conference I have had encounters in my life you've heard my story that I traveled around the world looking for people who were custodians of the graces of revivals the generals that died both in Africa and in the world who did they transfer that grace to i remember one of the men that i met he told me he said let me tell you this smith wigglesworth spoke to lester sumro and said do not die with this mantle you carry the moment you are old start looking for young men look for young men everybody will not be stubborn and proud there will be somebody who will be open enough he said transfer those graces don't go with that grace We are not the ones who invented this. There are women who walked upon the earth and they carried power. There are women who were like angels on earth. There are men. Men who would sit down in crusade grounds before they begin to pray in your city and your region they walked upon this soil you would see will people on their way entering the crusade ground they've not entered the stadium yet and the people arise from the wheelchair because of the sheer enormity of the presence and the power they carry oh lord restore restore lord restore restore mantles restore graces King of kings, Lord of lords, you reign above all. King of kings, Lord of lords, you reign above all. So we sing your name next door. You reign. Let me tell you this. You will see a resurgence of miracles, signs, and wonders in your city. Jaw dropping miracles. The dead back to life. Once again. Not once a year. Not once a year cripples. No. That's not notable to compel the city. There are miracles that will, that on Sunday, cities will be shut down shops will be closed because everybody is coming to the house of the lord hallelujah now listen father this is a very defining moment listen to me please hear me there are some of you here you have not started ministry yet you are still in the period of training don't despise yourself you are the next apostolic and prophetic voices you are listen you are still in the cave of adulam but do not allow anybody despise you some of you are heads of little prayer groups be faithful there that's where god qualifies you don't move around with cards giving people and say invite me stay with God let him walk on you let him prune you 
Many years I was in a crowd like this in a Reinhard Bonke crusade. I was already in ministry, but not at this level. Many people just came to witness a great evangelist. I came with hunger to receive an impartation. I remember by the second day, I said I wanted to be part of the workforce. They said, no, I will not be part of the workforce because I was not trained. I said, what do you mean by I was not trained? You know where I traveled from? I saw people wheeling wheelchairs to the front. And I collected one of them. As I was pushing it, I said, Lord, this is how my crusades will be too. I'm honoring this grace. Behind every story, every glory, there is a story. Apostolic conferences like this open you up to the scars of great men. So that you will see that just because a cloth of royalty is covering it, does not mean there is no scar. And let no man trouble me. I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Let me tell you this. Many years ago, I used to serve a man of God. Many, many years ago, I played keyboard for a man. I will not mention his name. He was an evil man. They were part of, he had a ministry. They were part of those who went to go and preach for Basanjo when he was in prison. I would carry my own keyboard. I had my local assembly. But I would carry, help him please. I would carry my own keyboard listen carefully and i would go there and sit down and play and carry that same keyboard and trek home while i was serving i did not know that this was the evolution that would lead to an apostolic call let me tell you young men listen to me the pride that comes with fighting authority it will destroy you your service and your humility is what will qualify you for the mantle that you desire no god starts as a king you start as a shepherd if you are faithful as a shepherd then you will become a king so this is what we'll do i'm going to lay my hands and we're going to pray and when i pray please someone take the mic to our father where he is because we don't want him to be moving around no daddy please sit someone get a good mic take to him when i pray right from where he is our father is going to pray on behalf of all the apostolic eastern elders in this city even those who have gone and those who are alive he represents that signpost and he's going to ask the lord we're going to say lord let those mantles that have been locked up in the soils of the east let those mantles once again Eli Elisha's bones were carrying great anointings and one day they brought it they meandered a madman a, a dead man and he came and touched that bones and life came back to him it is dishonor that stops transference of graces are we ready i will pray and then we'll, we'll pray please just listen to what he's saying and when we are done then the men here that will respect all the senior men of god please none of them let it be maybe yes our daddy and just direct them the senior men of god and yes so the, the leaders i don't know how you distribute them please everybody let the oil touch them you don't need to come out just stay where you are i'm sure that there are people outside even if you have a child at your back no problem there is not idolatry by the time that oil comes on you lay it on your head your hand the symbol of productivity and turn and fire blast in tongues lord every grace every mantle are we together now father the god of abraham isaac and jacob hold on who is a fluent man of god in Igbo here you pray in Igbo, fluent there's someone like that don't be afraid please sir please come
this is a very prophetic meeting be patient i'm going to give him the mic you're going to pray and speak over the east and ask the lord that we require a visitation of fire in the east and i want you to pray in the Igbo dialect jesus Jesus Christ on your way. Praise the name of the Lord. We are praying. Father, I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I lay my hands upon this oil. These are ordinary bottles of oils. But I bow my knees to you, O God of my covenant. And in the name, you don't have to kneel. Please, you don't have to kneel. Just stand. Father, I pray, let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon this oil. That upon every head and every destiny it rests upon. Let this grace represent the anointing for the revival that is sweeping across the earth now. Lord, you desire to bring it to the east in a new dimension and we pray. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, let this oil bring many into depths of encounters. Let this oil bring many into their call. Let this oil anoint many for signs and for wonders. Let this oil be oil of revival, oil of judgment upon altars. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare it sanctified. We declare it anointed. In the name of Jesus. Now let's, we're going to allow our father pray first. He's going to pray. Just where he is. And he's going to represent the generation of our fathers. All the fathers of faith within the east of the Niger. He should be about the oldest of them that I know. And so he will lift up his voice and pray. Daddy please. Ah, Jesus. As he went, I never be able to get on so. When I walk, I come on so. I go che, I keep the roll on the ibo. I be able to so na ha Jesus. Lord, the the sicknesses. In families, sicknesses, in businesses, in ministries will end in the name of Jesus Christ. At last, as you said, this sickness is not unto death, but that the Father may be glorified. Oh Lord, glorify yourself in what we do for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, open doors, open new doors, open the doors we did not knock at, open strange doors, open doors in foreign lands. Open doors around us. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may your people rejoice again. May they witness miracles in all our services. Thank you, Father, for doing it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Louder, amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Okay, please, very quickly, someone, you take it. This will be for the men and the women of God. And then you can pick it. Just distribute it. Everyone pray in the spirit until your oil gets to you. When it gets no distraction, please forget whether it's husband or wife. Forget about that. Focus. Let your eyes be on Jesus and be on your destiny, inside or outside. All over this place, let's begin to pray in the spirit. If the oil is done and, and you don't have it, don't worry. Just a touch, put it on your head. Very quickly, please. Let the servants of God, you can direct them. Please, someone direct the servants of God in the land or those who have come. They can be directed, please. Okay, S uh, sit down everybody. Are you praying in the spirit? Please, once they touch you, you can stand up. Just stand up and go. Just stand up and go, please. Are we doing the right thing? Hold on, please. Please, men of God, let's not be rowdy. You can just stand in a line or so, maybe two lines, please. I know you are men of God. Just stand on two lines so that our daddy will just, just a touch, just a touch and that's all right. For the rest, you don't need to be touched. They'll just give you the bowl. You touch it by yourself. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. As the oil comes on you, pray. Don't look around. Just pray. Are you praying? Outside, pray. Everywhere, pray. Transgenerational transference. Graces, mantles. Please coordinate them. Let's not have ministers of once you are done. Please go back to your seat. Please. Please. If you are not a minister of the gospel, a senior man of God, please just go back to your seat. Please, once they touch you, just go back to your seat. Be patient. You don't have to fight. Be patient. What's that? Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't rush and come to me. Please stop it. Please help her. Help the girl. Please help them. Help them. Don't manhandle them, but help them. You don't have to do that. I am a man. I'm not God. Please. You will hurt yourself. Please. Please. 
hold on where are the two ladies don't worry hold on just bring them but don't fight them don't do my sister don't do that no take it easy please just calm down you will be prayed for take it easy please those outside make sure you are praying don't miss out this moment we are rounding up you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never Hey. You've Don't touched this grace. Your life has changed. You will never be the same. You've touched this grace. Your life must change. I I Oh. I I Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me know if we are done. Let me just know if we are done. New dimensions in the spirit. Shalabada kataprande ge debele de bos. Em protoko sopra da gada balato ziada. listen just listen to this while our father rounds up just laying hands on the people listen just instructions for the night please all of you please listen now I'm going to request tonight is a miracle service and an impartation service I will praying for you and just releasing graces and activating mantles graces and anointings of the prophesying and then we're going to be ministering to the sick guess what I want you to do please for you here following online all those who are outside please make sure number one you invite everybody around the city let them know that there is a crusade and God is doing much praise the Lord even if there is no space if you will sit on the roof sit on the roof tonight number two 
please let me encourage everyone come with a prayer request write down a list of everything that must leave your destiny in this season you can write it for yourself write it for your ministry your children your business your parents everything that has mocked god in your life that will not allow you be a reflection of the life and the power of god i want you to write it down when you come there will be ushers i'm going to be laying hands on them myself let the god that answers by fire tonight let him be god so even for those who for any reason may not make it you have loved ones who are abroad or everywhere please call them those who are following online i'm sure there will be a provision for you to just register your prayer request so that we'll pray tonight let your heart be enlarged come to receive you're a man of god you can come with your pastors you're a leader you can come with the members of your prayer groups come with your heart open ready to receive i'll share with you a revelation tonight and then we'll have the opportunity to pray are we blessed just a moment and our daddy is done please once they are done just stand up and walk away so that we'll make it very very fast very very fast I believe in the name of Jesus that no ministry represented here will be the same in the name of Jesus and whilst our father is still praying I declare that any wrong association you are part of that is making you compromise on your character compromise on your values in the name of Jesus we break those associations now every man of God here who has been struggling with church growth trusting God for increase in the name of Jesus who is responsible for increase I decree and declare the same grace that took the animals from the ark of Noah and brought them into the ark I declare may that grace bring all those who have been sent to your grace I hope you are receiving it in the name of Jesus Christ please um, if we do this we will not end here please protocol I expect you to be strict please just walk with those once we are done we are done don't worry God bless you once they are done with you okay these two more please go quickly so that we don't stress our father and everything that has put a dark veil over your ministry misrepresenting what you are doing you do good and people speak evil we tear those veils into pieces now in the name of Jesus Christ there are some of you you are in this city but the gate of the city is not yet open for you in the name of Jesus we prophesy to the two lift gates of a boy we speak to the east of the Niger those gates a father be open hither and thither in the name of Jesus Christ and for those of you who are sincere serving the Lord with all your heart but there are no results in your ministry no results of salvation transformation miracles change lives in the name of Jesus I call upon my God who is your God to honor you with the grace for performance the grace for strange results in the name of Jesus but ultimately I pray for you that more than the ministry that you do may your heart pant after God forever may nothing sustain the ability to steal your fire please hear me there is anyone here and there are habits there are things you are struggling with, suffering from whether you are a man of God or you are just an ordained church worker or just an effective Christian the grace for victory over those issues of concern receive that grace right now the spirit of competitive jealousy we banish it out of a boy state in the name of Jesus we declare there is love among men and women of God can I tell you the honest truth the truth is that, that all churches will not be the same if men of God will be different according to personality their levels of alignment and the election of grace but anybody who comes into this city to cause division to tear down the church we close the gates towards their ministry you must love one another don't gather men and teach and young people and you are talking about fellow ministers indoctrinating them tearing them down is immature 
we must be men of prayer the pain of one man of God is the pain of every man of God are we together now at times will come when when a man of God is organizing a crusade even if you are not able to make it you can slip in hundred thousand and say please use it to provide boss by so 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 man of God and even if in terms of the tenants your beliefs are far apart love is a binder are we together don't say because you do not submit to my father or my mentor because you don't have revelation like me because you don't heal like me you are an outcast we must kill that spirit is destroying the body of Christ we must have mutual respect you can't be a man of God that everybody keeps respecting while you don't respect anybody back and you should not only respect those above you you must respect those above you you must respect your contemporaries you must also respect those below you the Bible says honor all men the attitude that only respects fathers and you tear down your contemporaries demean those who are coming all of us were where they were that God brought us here tomorrow they will also rise and if you don't regard them by the time you become old like our father they will so dishonor you that pain will send you to your grave here and there there are people making mistakes I know character mistakes mistakes in terms of integrity in ministry will continue to pray and where God grants opportunity will bring advices in love rebukes and corrections according to the authorities God has given us but eternally we must love the body and we must love the church I am for Paul I am for Apollos I am for this that is devilish and destructive we must train our people to have regard for servants of the gospel we must train our people don't go back and say ah my in quote orthodox pastor in one church there now I have more revelation I can heal the sick it's not even filled with the Holy Ghost and then we carry our revelation and insult fathers every father of faith in this land deserves the honor of everyone regardless whether he's producing the kind of results we think or not we owe them respect are we together are we in agreement with that God will grant us that grace and for all the prayers we have prayed we say amen to it in the name of Jesus Christ so please prepare your heart for the evening let your heart be desperate you know a man of God who should be here please call him and tell him this is not a, this is not about Joshua Selman this is God visiting the land let our hearts be open let us receive for a new dimension the Lord bless you and see you in the evening